What are we doing here today? In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please do sit down. Advent is a strange time of year. It's a time of year when in our calendars we look back and think about the year that was. In the life of the church, Advent is the start of the new year. We're pulled between two directions, to look backwards and to look forwards. Sometimes we live through painful events. The world looks a bit darker for for a time. It becomes more difficult to see through that darkness to the light beyond. In that vein, 2020 has been one of the darkest years any of us can remember. I would go so far as to call 2020 the year of loss. 2020 has seen a huge loss of life. Coronavirus has stolen the lives of so many and many needlessly slow. Some of us here today will know that loss. Loved ones and friends no longer with us. Many more of us will know of friends and colleagues who have lost others. Yes, we have seen extraordinary selflessness by so many frontline workers, working hard every day to save lives. It's important we never forget them. They are heroes. But coronavirus has cast a dark shadow over so many lives. 2020 has seen a loss of belonging. Many have lost a sense of where we are. We have lost jobs or places of work. We've lost time in education. We've lost shared moments in our community. We've lost time together as families and friends. We have experienced isolation and loneliness probably like never before. I never knew the power of coming together until we could no longer. And, when we, and we have known that, of course, at St. Mary's. Worship hinges on the five senses. When you take away most of them, it's really hard to do without. Yes, people have shown incredible resilience and creativity in finding new ways of coming together virtually. But let's be honest. Nothing can ever replace a hug or even a handshake. The power of touch is irreplaceable. 2020 has seen a loss of direction. Many of us are no longer certain about our purpose. When our rhythms of life become so interrupted, we are forced to stop and look at things again. And sometimes that can be really unsettling. Do I really want to carry on doing what I'm doing now just because it's what I've always done? Do I really want to be with that person? Why am I living in this way? I think these might be some of the questions we have been asking ourselves. If we ask them properly, they're not easy questions to answer and they put everything under strain. 2020 could be written off as a year of darkness. But what's extraordinary about light is that somehow it breaks through, even in the darkest of times. And I want to share with you a story that I became a small part of just recently that taught me this lesson. Since leaving St Mary's, I've gone back to work in a school. Last week, a boy, let's call him A, got really upset one morning and he asked to talk with me. What followed with me will stay with me forever. Over the course of the next few hours, A opened up to me. He shared with me how his mum and he had been physically and emotionally abused by his dad for years. If I close my eyes, I'm back in the room with A as he tells me the unrepeatable things that happened and the words that were spoken to him. It was heartbreaking. And if I felt pain and shock, 
I cannot begin to imagine what he had been through every day. For the rest of the afternoon, between A's continual flow of disclosures, oh, and he did this to me, yeah, and he called me that word, I was sat in my office trying to sound calm but urgent with children's services and the police. I wanted to make things stop. I wanted to keep him safe. Every teacher who had, told, who had been told what had happened had already pleaded with me, let me take him home. Just at the point I was beginning to lose patience, A put his head around my door. Hello, he said in his high-pitched, unbroken voice, a nine-year-old voice that should have been so much more innocent of the ways of the world. How are you, A? I asked him, bracing myself for another round of what my dad did to me. A has something for you, said Miss M, a colleague with him. A looked sheepish. He had his hands behind his back. Close your eyes, he said. In the middle of a call to some social services manager, this was not what I expected, but I did so. Hold out your hands. I opened my eyes. A looked at me eagerly for signs of how I felt about what was in my palm. I looked down. The week before, I had gone shopping. Thinking one of my team might be wanting to do some craft activities, I had splurged in Poundland on what can only be described as a pile of sparkly crap. Colored card, glittery pipe cleaners, pom-poms, even miniature bells. Back in my office, and I opened my eyes. A had made me this, a Christmas card. He had transformed something nearly worthless into the most precious thing I have known in a long time. On the front, you can see two stars framed by the letters NW. On the inside, A had written, Merry Nickmas. Thank your help and kind from A. We need to work on his theology of the incarnation. I'm important, but I'm not that important, but that's aside the point. It took every fiber of my being not to break down in front of him. I was the one who should have been unbreakably strong for him. He should have been crumpled on the floor. But here we were. I on the edge of tears. A, the strongest person in school. And across his face, a huge smile, like a signature of love. That day in school was the darkest I have ever known. But in that moment, light burst in. A had been unspeakably brave, braver than anyone I have ever known. And he shared with me the most precious gift anyone in darkness can share. Hope. Hope for the light that is to come. I began by asking the question, what are we doing here today? There are so many ways we can answer that question. To come together, to worship, to pray, those are all good answers. But for me, after a year of darkness around the world, A has reminded me of a timeless truth. We are here because we are a people of hope. Hope doesn't ignore the darkness, but sees through it to the light beyond. Hope flourishes when people like A speak up and look for that light. We are called to walk in those footsteps. It has been a privilege to serve you. I have come to know you and think of you as my family. And today I want to say thank you. I feel today like any family member who has to leave his family for new adventures. And like anyone who moves away from his family, 
they never actually lose their family. As we near the end of this year and the beginning of the next, we are called to have hope. I know what A's hope is. Now I ask you, my family, what's your hope? We hope you have enjoyed this content that we have provided you with today. I'm here today to ask you if you would consider making a small donation to our church. It's tough times, but it's particularly tough for the church. We would love to continue to be able to provide you with these inspirational videos that bring the message of God's love. If you could make a small donation, it would mean the world to us. Please follow the link below. Thank you.